Hey, good morning. Scripture of the day. Hey, I got you your coffee just the way you like it. And you know what I even got for you today? I got you some monkey bread. Take a look at that. Yeah, you're gonna need to pull that pastry apart. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're gonna need with your monkey bread? Extra napkins, getting all that cinnamon on your fingers. Oh, hey, I gotta tell you about my morning. I'm having such an epic day already. I got up before the sun and I watched the sunrise down here in Newport Beach. I took a walk along the jetty. I went down to the wedge and I watched the wave break there on the shore. And I read tomorrow's scripture of the day, Jeremiah 5, the Bible verse about the beach. I cannot wait to share it with you. But, but I just got to tell you, this really means a lot that you would meet with me here today. Because I've had something I wanted to say to you for a while. And I need to apologize to you. I'm sorry nobody told you about repentance. Like this is something every dad should be sitting down and talking about with their kids. Every pastor should be meeting with the people in their church and explaining to them what it means to really change your mind, to really turn from living for yourself to living in a relationship with God. Like every preacher should be making this the exclamation point of their sermon. And so the fact that you would meet with me today and we could really do a Bible study on repentance. I, I'm sorry nobody's done this with you before, and I hope you'll really get into this with me because today's chapters are Jeremiah 3 and 4, and, and God is making his case to his people before it's too late, a limited time offer that they need to turn to him. And the word that is used in the Hebrew is shub, and it's gonna come up over and over. It's used over a thousand times in the Hebrew Bible. And so every time in Jeremiah three and four that you read the word return or the word turn, it's gonna be our word shub. And it's gonna be what God is asking his people to do, to turn to him. Now in verse 10, God says, you gotta return to me with all your heart. And the reason they're translating the Hebrew word shub, which is the basic word to turn, but they translate it return here, is because God did have a love with his people Israel. But then they went into idolatry. And he even talks about the stone and the tree that they were, that they were going and worshiping. And they're thinking they're going to get something out of it, some benefit from these idols. And he's saying, you've got to come back to me with all your heart. You gotta return. So this is so important that you understand this about repentance. Whenever we repent of something, we're turning from whatever that is and we're turning to something that's the opposite. So if it's an idol, well then we're turning to God. If it's a sin that we have in our life, then we're turning to righteousness. If it's a dead work where we're just going through the motions, doing the right thing, but it's not from the heart, it doesn't mean anything, then we've gotta turn to like a sincere love for the Lord. So it's not enough to just feel bad about your sin. It's not even enough just to confess it and then stay in it. You can't just know it's wrong. You gotta say, I I'm changing my mind about it. I don't agree with it. I don't accept it anymore. I'm gonna turn from this. And then when you're turning to something else, what are you replacing your sin with? As a Christian, we're putting off our old life. What is the new thing we're putting on in its place? And so they got to put away this stone and this tree and these ceremonies and these rituals and their idolatries and they got to come to God with all of their heart. God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want anything to get in the way between you and him. So you got to turn away from that and come to him with all your heart. And he starts speaking to them like children, like a father who loves his children. Return, O oh faithless child. Return, faithless Israel. Return, O oh faithless sons. Like he keeps saying it over and over. He's clearly making a point. When you get to chapter four, verse one, he says, if you return, O Israel, declares the Lord, to me you should return. If you remove your detestable things from my presence, just leave that behind, get it away, and do not waver. If you swear as the Lord lives in truth, in justice, and in righteousness, then nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. So, I mean, God's looking for the real deal here. He says, when you turn, O Israel, you got to turn to me. 
And I'm talking about like, you gotta remove those other things. There's gonna be no compromise. God's not gonna let you be in a relationship with someone else and him. That's not how it's gonna work. He wants all of your heart. And so you gotta remove the detestable things. And he's talking about truth, justice, righteousness. That's what he's looking for in his relationship with his people. And it's not even just talking about actions. I mean, repentance is proven by our deeds. If somebody turns from their sin and they turn to God, you'll be able to see it. There, there'll be fruit. There'll be works. The scripture's clear that repentance always has a follow-up. It all, there's always a follow-through to it, but that's not even what God's looking for. He's looking for the real you coming from the inside. He wants all that you are. You can't just seek him a little bit. You can't just try harder today, do better tomorrow. No, he says, I got to have all of you. He says this in, in Jeremiah 4, verse 4. He says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskin of your hearts. See, this is a clear reference to Deuteronomy 10, 16. And see, the, the symbol of circumcision was, was how you knew you were an Israelite. I mean, it was, a, it was a symbol of the covenant, the special relationship they had with God. But see, what God really, he says, hey, you can't just be symbolically my people. Your heart has to really be mine. And so this is, this is God saying, you're not doing what I told you in the law. You're not obeying it. In fact, your heart doesn't even want to obey it. It's not, it's, you're not loving me with all your heart. That's why you would obey my command. See, I don't have your heart is what God's saying to his people. How can I be your God and you be my people and I have a relationship with you if I don't have your heart? That's what God's saying. Now, God, he's calling, return, turn, turn. But then it starts to get to where God's going to respond to people. When people repent, then God relents. This is the clear teaching of the prophets. If you turn from your sin, God turns from his judgment. But if you don't turn from your sin, then God won't turn from the judgment that is coming. And he says that in Jeremiah 4, verse 28, he says, For this the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above be dark. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. And so God is so patient because he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to reach repentance. That's 2 Peter 3, 9. Like, I'm sorry nobody told you about repentance, but God has been so patient with you to give you an opportunity to repent. But that's for a limited time. And it comes to an end. And God's saying, if the person doesn't turn in the time that he gives them, if they don't leave their sin, and come to him with all their heart, then God's not gonna turn. He's not gonna relent. See, there's a way here that we gotta think about that we're gonna see throughout Jeremiah where God responds to you. And if you turn to God, he turns away from judgment. But if there's no turn from God, from you, there will be no turn from God. That's what he's saying here. Hey, Israel, hey, Judah, hey, my people that I love, that I think of in the closest possible relationship terms. If you don't come to me with all your heart, if you don't turn to me, then I'm not gonna turn back from my judgment. And that's really what we're getting to here. By the end of chapter four, it's like, hey, your opportunity to repent it is closed. Your time is up. And now in tomorrow's chapter, when the waves are crashing on the beach, I mean, it's all out judgment, vengeance, shall I not punish you, says the Lord. And so we're living right now in a day of salvation, in a time of repentance. In fact, this weekend at our church, we're going to preach from Acts chapter 2. We're going to hear per Peter's first sermon in the history of the church. And he, he's going to preach the gospel and he's going to say, you killed Jesus because of your sin. You killed him on the cross, but God raised him up from the dead. And he's going to preach it with the power of the spirit. And it's going to cut to the people's heart. They're going to feel it. They're going to be convicted and they're going to say, what do we do? And he's going to say the word that should be out of every preacher's mouth, out of every pastor's mouth, out of every parent's mouth repent that's what you should do we're going to preach that at our church this weekend we're going to give the clear call to respond to the gospel will you join me in praying that we will see people repent this weekend at our church 
Will you join me in praying right now that somebody will repent in response to watching this video? That people will realize, hey, I, I keep feeling bad about my sin. I keep saying I'm going to stop my sin, but I don't turn from my sin. That's what God's looking for. That's what Peter's going to say. It's like, oh, we feel bad. We shouldn't have killed Jesus. We change our mind. We wish we wouldn't have done it. We wish there was another way. Okay, well, here's what you do then. Repent. See, that's the word that God wants you to hear, that you've got to make that your response, where you turn from the way you were thinking and you turn to God with all of your heart. So I'm going to pray right now, and I hope you'll join me in this prayer. And we'll pray this every day this week that God will call people to repent, that he will grant them repentance and we will see people's lives turn around, make a U-turn this weekend. So let's pray about it, all right? Can we pray together? Father in heaven, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. And we did kill Jesus. He did die because of our sin. And God, in your mighty power, you raised him up. On that third day, that tomb was empty because Jesus was alive and God I pray that you would make it clear to every single one of us that what you're telling us to do is to repent and I pray that this weekend at our church that gospel of Jesus will ring out that call to repent will be heard and you will grant people salvation God that you will turn them around that they will respond oh God we are asking you God, we know that's what you want. We can, we can read your heart here in Jeremiah 3 and 4. We can see your passion for your people. We know that even now, that today is a day of repentance where people can turn to you before it's too late. And we pray that this weekend, God, we will see people repent because you will do the mighty work of turning them around, Father. So let this word repent ring out. And please save souls, we pray in Jesus name. Wow, thank you so much for meeting with me. I'm so glad we could have this most important conversation. I mean, you don't mind if I have, I mean, you can pull this apart. You don't mind if I have just one of these little pieces, right? Is that okay if I just, I'll just have one. Have a great rest of your day. Wow, this was such a great meeting. Thank you so much.